Howdy, y'all. Richard Schneeman here. I am uh, triaging some issues, and I came across uh, this one in a gem that I maintain. I authored and maintain called Git Process Mem. Uh, believe it or not, it reports the memory of a process. Um, and so here they are reporting that the uh, the PID is not respected on Mac uh, platform. So uh, basically, how the how the gem works, uh, you require it, and then you can say Git Process Mem uh, dot new, and, and then dot dot kb and it'll it'll tell you how many um kilobytes your your current process is use using um you can also do you know dot mb dot gb all, all that jazz uh yay libraries but uh if you are trying to you should be able to pass it a different process uh pid and then it will tell you um the the memory of that uh of that process so here they're passing in a different pid and uh, it's not correct. So, um, you know, this is, if you were, <laughs> if you had never seen this before, if you're using this, if, if you wanted to triage this, hopefully it's because you're using it. Hopefully it's because it's in your gem file somewhere. Um, you know, you can start by looking at, you know, how it works. Um, if you have no idea, you know, looking at this, uh, this is, library is super, super small. Um, I think the vast majority of it is in, yeah, you know, it's, this one is 124 lines. Um, there is a little secret, uh, sauce where you, uh, might see that there is, this is the problem actually, just because I'm the maintainer and I know what's going on, um, that, uh, this is a um, this is FFI, which I've actually never touched uh, before. But uh, Frederick Chung, who is um, amazing, sent me this patch, um, which I think sped up the time to read uh, memory in a Mac by like twelve x, fifteen x. It was it was really good. Um, so anyway, that you might you might notice that. Uh, likely though, if you have never seen a a project before um, the tests are really the best place to start. There's just one file. There's also a fixtures file, um, and I mean it's pretty small, um, but it'll kind of give you give you an idea. Uh, so there's some. Let me see. What are the, what's in the fixtures? We've got um, bash smap and bash status. Uh, so the, w the way the, the Linux version of this works is it reads from, um, from SMAP, I think. Let me see, Linux status memory. Okay, and then we're testing the conversions. All right, so we are not testing, um, any of the Mac stuff, which is exciting. Uh, let me just double check. Let me see, so I'm gonna, uh, so this came in on this commit, gonna see what the PR looked like. Um, did it have any tests? It would, oh. Um, Linux OS X, process if runs on Darwin, Darwin RB, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> okay, here, uh, what I did is I took, um, I took Frederick's work on, uh, 32. Yeah, it was 12 X faster. So, um, we discussed it a little bit there. I took, um, his work and then, um, just built on top of it, made it, made my own PR. Uh, and then basically I just assumed that there were tests that, that ran the current process, um, and I targeted um, OS X as a, uh, as a as a t as a test mode. Um, but as we just looked at the test, it it looks like uh, I there aren't any there aren't actually any um, any uh, any tests for this. So uh, we're gonna have to kind of start from scratch. Uh, what I'm thinking is we want to um, just off the top of my head, uh, since this bug is about 
Um, yeah, so one of the difficulties here is um, the memory size of a process is it's hard to know in advance. Um, this isn't like, hey, we're going to build a string and it's going to be the same string every time. When every time you boot a process, it's it's going to have a slightly different memory size. Um, and so we can't just like boot a process, assert, hey, it's got this, it's got this memory size. Um, so that's one issue. Uh, so we're going to have to kind of get uh, creative. We're going to have to probably boot processes. Uh, since this is a issue of um, the, the memory size not being reported correctly, we, um, we're going to have to boot one process and read from it inside of the other process. Uh, oh. and so this is actually going to be, I think the test I mean, I don't know for a fact, but I think the test here is probably going to be trickier than the fix. Um, and th that is the case. Uh, I don't always do um, test-driven development, but uh, a lot of times in like a, well, sometimes in a bug report, <laughs> it can be good. Um, even just the fact that, hey, there's no there's no tests for this, um, whether or not we end up fixing the bug, having this, you know, having some way of testing uh, and actually making sure we're executing this code on on the on Darwin um, is good uh, because, like, as as is, I don't think any of this code gets executed. Um, well, there's one way we can test. Uh, let's okay. Let's go into that. Get process mem. Um, origin master. You probably all want this to be a little bit bigger. Okay, let's make that a little bit bigger. Um, all right, so. Well, that is bundling. I'm going to open up a new window. Oh, and this needs to be bigger too. Open up a editor. So that's going to take a little bit of time to install. Um, so this is the Darwin version. And one of my, one of my tricks <laughs> for seeing if something is tested is pretty simple. Uh, we're just gonna raise an exception here and then run the tests and, oh, geez. Um, so uh, FFI is a native extension um, library, so it's telling me that it couldn't install it. I do have it on the system. Uh, so I'm gonna try a bundle update instead. Um, it's saying that it, it can't, it can't, um, so it was 1.9.23. My guess is that, uh, that version of FFI was using a slightly different, um, API from, um, that wasn't supporting Ruby 2.7. And so, uh, bundle update will unlock it. And then in, in this case, I already had this version installed. Um, I think, uh, yep. And then, huh, that's interesting. I, yeah. So anyway, that's not what this, <laughs> that's not what this cast is about. Now the session's about, uh, so we're not going to get super into that. Um, BE is my little shortcut for bundle exec and then rake by default just executes default tasks. So, um, oh, Cool, 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 cool. So uh, well, previously, in my previous, uh, so here I ran bundle exec rake, which is I think probably, let me see, uh, this a shortcut for rake test. It's probably the default rake task. Um, yep, it is. And so I'm getting a couple of warnings. I probably need to upgrade. Oh, test unit. This is, we're using test units as our, test runner here uh most this is pretty old 
Um, might want to upgrade that to mini test or switch it over to our spec or um, at least upgrade the this library, the test unit library. Uh, and so anyway, I, I added that exception, ran the tests, and we got that exception. So that is good. I can go ahead and delete it here. One second. My dogs are barking. All right, that's my co-working space with my dogs there. Um, so this is failing in um, the git process mem test. Test and um, okay, yeah. So previously when I said, hey, it's actually pretty hard to test this stuff, here's, we're just testing that that we're doing, we're calling it, and we are um, asserting that it's just above zero. So not super helpful, but it's a, at least it's a um, executing the test. So if somebody did accidentally add some sort of a exception or bug, at least the code gets, gets executed. Um, okay. Hmm. So I'm thinking we can probably just do something along the lines of um, booting up just a really small process, getting the um, getting the PID from it, and asserting that our current process um, memory is higher than the the process memory of the process we just booted. Uh, and originally I was thinking we could special case this to be Mac only, to only run on Mac, but I don't think we need to. Test different. Uh, so here in te the, the, yeah, the test unit, we are, um, we have to start everything with test underscore. That's how we know it's a test. Uh, okay. So, um, this is going to be the other memory. Uh, we need to pass in the PID. Uh, we are going to um, refute equal... Uh, Um, so, uh, yeah, we're going to refute that they're not the same, and we're also going to assert that our process is larger than the other process. Uh, you know, I'm not super in love with either of these assertions. Technically, the second one handles this one, um, if because if one is greater than, it can't be equal, so I guess I'm just going to delete that. I've just talked myself out of it. Uh, Okay, now I'm going to, now I need to boot a process, um, which is always exciting. Um, let me see. I, uh, this is code I've written, mm, like, non, a non-trivial number of times, um, to, to boot and manage a, a process, um, it just, the, the, you know, Ruby gives you what you need out of the box, but it could be a little prettier, a little nicer. Um, so, uh, session doc. let's see. Um, called it process spawn. There we go. Uh, so don't need that. Don't need that. Uh, so yeah, here you give it a command, a timeout, it'll, and it gives you access to stuff like the logs and things, um, which I guess we probably don't need. Uh, uh, yeah, this is a little bit more. This is a little bit more than we need. Okay. Um, so we're just going to probably use process spawn directly instead. 
Okay, and... Uh, what are you? There we go. Yep, did I mention new keyboard? Um, okay, so we need to boot a process. Uh, uh, so if I, and I needed to stay alive, that's the other, that's the other issue. Um, if I run, let's see if I run tail, um, on a file that I know is not, <laughs> that is not changing. So tail, what, uh, dash F, what does dash F mean? Um, ugh. Keyboard. There we go. Uh, what does dash F do? Dash F uh, option causes the tail to not stop when the end of the file is reached. I was hoping it was going to tell me it's like for follow or something. Um, well, let's just call it follow. So dash F will follow any changes in that. And um, so like if, let me see. Yeah. Echo. Hello. Um, then it'll show up here. So that's cool. Unfortunately, we just modified our gem file, so I'm going to go fix that. Um, so this should, and tail should be very small. Um, it's got, I mean, I'm hoping it'll be smaller than our current Ruby. Uh, so we're going to boot this PID, uh, do this assertion, and then uh, we also need to clean up Ensure, um, and then this is how we what am I doing here? Um, I <laughs> love when I've written code and I don't know what it's doing. I don't know what this uh, process get PG ID is doing. Um, oh yeah, I will say that the PG group is uh, is saying that this is a group. Um, it's, it's grouping our process under the parent process. So if the parent process dies or quits, um, it will also quit. So hopefully that should help prevent... Um, Oh, oh, I didn't write it. That's why. <laughs> That's why I don't know what it did. Uh, does. Yeah, so if if uh, we don't want to leave, as we're running our test, we don't want to just leave a bunch of orphan processes around. Um, kill PID term. Okay, I'm going to have to see what this does. I'm going to have to look up the docs for this. I don't want to just... And that's how I know about the, the PG group because I originally just had it spawn the command. And then Joe came here and was like, hey, here's a, here's a PR. Um, and I did the same thing where I pulled in his commit and then I, I added some docs and I did some other stuff. Um, number 17. Anyway, what did he say? This, and this is why I always try to write good commit messages because I've seen this about a billion times. I mean, even in my code uh, where it's just like, hey, here's what it does, but then no other comments. Um, yeah. So let's look up, um, what is this? Process Ruby API. Ah, keyboard. Copy. Paste. Okay, I've got it. Got it now. Ruby process. Here we go. This is old, but it should be good enough. Um, there we go. Returns the process group ID for the given process ID. Uh kill signal PID uh, so that yeah the, the the reason I'm I'm killing the reason we're killing here is we need to make sure that it it ends um, we, we send a term and unfortunately there's no way to send send messages to uh, processes other via other other than via signals 
Um, and the, the way you do it is with process.kill, which uh, in this case, we are actually killing it, so it, it's not that big of a deal. Um, there's, there's sig term, there's also sig kill. Uh, sig term says uh, exit gracefully. Uh, and then once we've done that, we need to actually turn around and wait for it to, to, to exit. Um, so I think I was actually wrong about uh, the, the, uh, what PG group does. Let's look up the docs for it. PG group. I think I was... Ah, okay. So uh, what the PG group stuff does is, uh, if I'm reading the docs right, is it makes a new PG group. Um, so then like if your process, like let's say I am booting up, yeah, I'm calling process.spawn and I'm booting up a rail server. That rail server is going to boot up other processes potentially, um, maybe like Puma workers, for example. And, uh, and then when that happens, if you close down the rail server, you want those, uh, pro the, the whole process group to exit. You want to wait for all of them. Um, now I don't know why it's negative, but I guess it doesn't matter. We can just directly, we, we can use the PID. We don't need, um, we don't need the fancy stuff. Okay. So we'll use PID, we'll use the PID. Uh, if PID, um, you know, just in case. So yeah, uh, basically if there, if a PID, if this generates a PID, if there's not some exception before, before then, um, then it'll, it'll have this PID variable value uh and then we want to kill it and wait for it uh i mean it just looks a little cleaner you don't you know it's a matter of style <laughs> matter of preference um okay so i think if i run this it's gonna fail because it should be the same. So let's run our tests again. Oh, false is not true. Good. That. Okay. Um, so there's our bug. Let's go ahead and I like to use a graph. Oh, we're on, we're on the default branch. We need a, a new branch. Um, use my username as a preface and then what do we want to call this uh fix mac uh pid bug it's good enough generic enough um specific enough i guess i don't know okay uh yeah so i use a graphic editor for git just because i like it it's open source it's actually a fork of an open source. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and give a little commit here um, just so I don't lose this. And I can come back and edit it and amend it later. Um, in Yeah, in open source, I don't like to only do one commit per um, pull request. It just makes the history a lot cleaner. It just... it you you end up being if you want to roll back to a very specific commit then everything should work um i don't know i've just been doing it for so <clears throat> for so long it's kind of my default now and the the instead of having a bunch of really small atomic commits um you end up just amending one but i've also learned that in the process of, of working on that commit working on that pr uh it's still good to make a bunch of small atomic commits um just because you you want to go forwards and backwards in history. All right. Um, so this is the failing test, which is good. We expected it to fail. And now let's look at this FFI code. Whew. Um, so here we go. We've got guess, get process mem, uh, Darwin, that's still all Ruby. Then we've extended this uh, FFI library, which gives us all of this uh, fun jazz. So... Um, it's t we're saying, hey, uh, the we're going to be using C. We're going to be using the C language as our extension language. Um, and basically what we're doing is we're hooking into 
um, some existing Ruby, some existing C code uh, that we have headers for on um, on the on the platform on Mac. Uh, and then we are going to attach uh, this mock task self. Uh, I don't know why we have an empty array here. I'm sure I could maybe look up the attach function code uh, to this Darwin mock uh, port uh, underscore T. Um, so normally when it's an underscore T, it's a, uh, you know, it's like a, it's like a type. Uh, and then same with task info. Then we are declaring a, a pointer um, as an FFI struct. I'm sure, again, this is something that, um, and we're, get, we're giving it a value uh, and an, an int, an integer. Um, okay, again, we're doing the same thing with task info. Then mock task basic info 20 for some reason. Um, info count is task info. And, and I, um, when I got this PR, I manually just verified that it was <laughs> in the ballpark. Like I booted the process and got the info from this and then also looked at like activity monitor. Um, and so that was kind of how we looked at it before. Uh, we verified it before. So, uh, I didn't write this code, so I don't have a lot of the con, and I've never worked with FFI, so I don't have a lot of context of what's going on here. Okay. Um, I will say also, like, if you ran into this, like, even, um, even just adding a failing test, like, it's worth it to make a PR and say, here's a failing test for this. Um, and... Then someone, even if someone, like someone else can then take that, it's kind of similar how in, in these other PRs, like Joe just made a commit and then I took the commit and I ran with it. Um, Frederick made this commit and I took it and added some tests and whatnot. Um, so like I'm, even if we wanted to stop here, like that would probably be good enough. I don't even know if I'll be able to do this, uh, cause it's not super obvious where, uh, PID would even come in. Um, so let's take a look at our, let's take a look at the other, the rest of the code. How does this get used? Runs on windows, runs on Darwin, uh, PG, get process mem Darwin. Darwin memory, Darwin, Darwin resident set size. There we go. Um, I don't think I saw that. Okay, here we go. So uh, what happens is our code will call Darwin.resident set size, um, which then calls mock task info which um, executes this. Uh, and it looks like it will return a hash. And then we pull resident set size out of it. So since I don't know what I'm doing, let's verify that's the case. Uh, uh Okay, task info. I guess it's, in, oh, it returns a task info object, which makes sense. Um, and here's our task info. It's got suspend count, virtual size, user time, system, uh, virtual size, resident size. Great. It's, and then you access it like a struct because it's an FFI struct. Hey, that all makes sense. Um, okay, so in this scenario, what do we want? We've got, we actually have the PID. So we want to pass it PID somehow. And this is going to fail because it's against the method signature. Um, is that def? And yeah, this code is, I wrote this code a long time ago. Um, and I wrote it, I, I mostly took it from, I credited them here. Um, I took the original, yeah, from, from Unicorn Worker Killer. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's not super pretty. Don't blame me. 
Um, I probably would have chosen to do things a little differently had I started right now. So uh, resonant set size, we're, and we're going to pass the pass this PID. Um, let's just a uh, little trace around there, and then uh, PID dot inspect. Uh, so we should expect to see it. Okay, the same PID, same PID. Then here's different PIDs. Good. So I think that's that's our um, the test that, from the test that we wrote. So we are passing in different PIDs. Now uh, we have to figure out this how this works. So we create some data, or we create this. Those are both those um, structs. Info count. What is this? Uh, and then we call task info. And so task info is bound here. Okay, uh, let's go back to the original PR. Bye, Frederick. And see if, um, yeah, he linked to some documentation. He probably did. Oh, Stack Overflow. Cool. Um, ah. Task info. Um, so mock is the is uh, the kernel for Mac. It's it's actually open source, um, entirely open source, which is pretty cool. So I think we're going to need that. Hopefully, there's some docs here. Um, here we go. Return per task information according to specified flavor. Uh, okay. Um, all right. So we're going to get info basic. Basic, is that a thing? Basic, returns basic information about the task, such as the suspend count and number of resident pages. Sweet. Um, oh, keyboard. Okay, copy, map. Uh, okay, yeah, so here we are again. <laughs> Lovely. Um, and this is returning just the information for the current process. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask them the question. This was this was answered six years ago, but I'm going to go ahead and ask anyway in case somebody else has this, and I can maybe come back and re-answer my own question, hopefully. Um, oh, I've already upvoted it. Uh, and I've, I said, uh, thanks a ton for this. The code here returns info for the current process. Do you know how to retrieve the resident set size for a different PID on Mac? Eh, just ask. Can never hurt. Um, mask, mock task self. So I'm assuming, uh, okay, here we're, and we can look at the docs. 
Uh, it takes in a task, um, the port for the task, which is the information to be returned. Mm. And then the flavor, task info, information about the specified task, uh, and then this, task info count on input, the maximum size of the buffer in shared units. Um, mm. So here's where, this is our return type, it sounds like. Um, I was hoping that this task, this task is the, okay, the port for the task for which the information is to be returned, uh, which sounds weird. And here's mock task self. So I was hoping that this is, this could be like a reference to a different process. Um, so I want to get that. Mock task self. Returns a send write to the callers task self port. Okay, so I think ports, I don't, I'm not familiar with that. Um, I mean, I don't know if it's the same as like a opening up a port in like HTTP port. Uh, I'm assuming not, uh, the current tasks kernel port. Okay. Um, so now I am wondering if I can possibly get, um, a port for, ugh, which is refining the return self environment variable, which is cached on the task. So if it's the kernel port, I don't. I think the kernel port is going to be global. Uh, I was really just hoping we'd be able to like... <laughs> we'd be able to say, hey, here's... Here's... Uh, you know, here's the PID. But we're not even using PID in this code. Um, so this is going to be a lot harder than I'd previously thought. Mock tac, task self. Is that the same function name? Oh, it is. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, so this is this turned um, difficult pretty quickly. <laughs> so uh, um, we could another. Um, I mean, in exploration. The other um, option, instead of, there's always more than one option to fix something. Um, the other option we have here uh, is to um, we could check and see if the PID, um, we could say something like this. Uh, which is gross. Um, basically, we're saying if it's on a Mac and the, the PID we're passing in is um, this process.PID, then... You know, then go for it. Um, uh, then, then call this. Then call this. This, this is an optimized version, basically. Um, like this Darwin memory, like the the binding to the C code and all that jazz. Um, 
And so we could, yeah, it's fast, uh, which is why we want it. But the one, this is kind of like graceful degradation. Um, I don't know how to provide. Ugh, okay, that's my timer um, telling me I need to stretch. Uh, okay, the, um, yeah, I don't know how to pass in a PID here. And so we can just avoid the problem by degrading. And then this, this PS memory, you'll see what it does here. It just, it just shells out. Um, and that's the reason why it was slow is because shelling out is really, really slow. Um, so let me see. Let's, I'm curious how slow this call is. Um, where are we? Uh, so I'm going to write a super quick benchmark. Um, uh, X. I don't know why it's done like this, but... So one of them is going to be... Process.pid. And the other one is going to be... Um, there's not really an alternative here. And so I'm just going to do. A string new. And it'll give me a idea of the relative cost of um, creating a string to getting the, the, the current process PID. Um, let's see. I imagine it's going to be quite a bit. Oh, I'm surprised. Um, I was thinking getting, a, creating a string would be, you know, much faster. Um, I mean, creating a string is... I'm not going to say free. <laughs> it's basic. Uh, it's basically free. I think I forget. You need something like, I think like 6,000 strings. Um, I did. I, I benchmarked it at one point in time. I I want to say it's like 6,000 to 10,000 strings per like a millisecond or, or something like that. Um, or 40,000. Like it's a lot. Uh, I Don't quote me on any of that. You can write your own benchmark. Um, but the fact that it's only three, basically three x slower uh, to call process.pid instead of creating string new makes me think it's not that big of a deal. Um, still, there's a way to. Uh, okay, I did not want to do that. I'm gonna close those. Uh, there's a way we can avoid calling it altogether, just because I am a sucker for. Um, performance stuff. So, uh, default. Yeah, yeah. And this is, I mean, I don't want to make this anything any slower. So, uh, what I'm going to do here, um, is say, um, if PID is equal to default value, um, PID is equal to process.pid. Uh, Uh, so we can do something like this. Uh, we just we assign the default value to a just. I guess I'm going to change this to. Uh, to default PID. Uh, the reason I use object.new is it's guaranteed to be unique. We can't accidentally pass it in, um, and then basically. Uh, uh, 
Um, uh, so now, if we're not passing in any value, then we're just going to use whatever the default is. Um, Default, oh, I'm gonna change this to PID as well. Uh, and this is assuming that the process.pid call is slow, which it's not. Uh, it's not as slow as I would have thought, but it's also not free. Um, and uh, so this is gonna be, this is also assuming that you're gonna create the object once and then um, run it, you know, multiple times. Uh, because this, you know, here we're doing a comparison. We're adding, we're adding an extra bit state. Uh, we're adding an extra value. Um, uh, you know, making creating a little bit more memory. Uh, there needs to be a Ruby object in here. I mean, that's getting into the into the weeds here. Uh, I mean, functionally, this code is basically the same as we had before, where we were just checking the PID directly. Um, the only uh, the only difference is it could still fail um, if you are if you are passing in um, like if you manually call get process m dot uh, process uh, dot new and pass in like process. Uh, which, you know, now that I'm saying that out loud, it seems like both of those should be equally as fast. Um, and so let's actually, let's actually get rid of this. Uh, you know, it's only th like creating three strings is again, pretty fast. Um, and that makes the code pretty ugly. Uh, so let's undo. Oh. Sometimes, you know, it's good to just try out, uh, like, my final version of my code is never exactly what I wanted it or thought it would be when I first started to write it. Um, and just sometimes you, as you're writing it, you realize, hey, this is slightly different from, you know, what I would have thought. Um, it's like I didn't really see that uh, difference in behavior of explicitly passing in the process or not until I actually tried it and then and then I noticed it uh, so so here we go um, this is the exactly the code we had before so if we're on a Mac and the process IDs match then we're going to use this faster version otherwise um, so this is going to be memory is going to be nil uh, otherwise memory is going to be nil otherwise we're going to call this PS memory um, you know, I think we could also, that's fine. It is fine. So, uh, now let's run our tests. Exit. Exits. If I run the tests, yay, everything passed. Uh, okay. So I think this is good. This is definitely better than the code before. Uh, there is a slight performance hit. Um, and again, it's only as much at like, you know, to, to compare, it's the same as if I did this. Uh, you know, <laughs> in my code is it's pretty, pretty fast. Um, assuming, oh, hey, I don't have the, um, while I'm here, I can go ahead and, um, let me see. There's a, there's a string, um, freeze. I can I can freeze my strings, which I don't think I need. I don't think it's gonna really help here. I'm not really using strings. I don't need it. Okay, uh, we'll we'll make that a separate issue. Um, so, all right, next. Uh, I said I don't like bad commit messages, so let's make this message not a bad commit message. Since the other one was so small, I'm just gonna amend directly into it. Um, Let's get our references. 
Um, Darwin. I'm gonna. I think they mean Darwin. It's fine. Okay, so we can say close number, whatever this number is. Um, and then what is this doing, right? That we are supporting. Uh, we are, we are respecting. We are supporting. We are adding support for. Uh, I'm trying to keep it under 80 characters so it'll fit. Um, yeah, it's reasonable. Okay. Uh, so that's. Unfortunately, I cannot make this any bigger. Um, so supporting different PIDs on Mac. Uh, Currently, when you call, uh, uh, get process mem dot new, um, um What was the what was it? I'm gonna. This is I just use Sublime as Scratch. Um, old habits, I guess. Darwin memory, Darwin dot resident set size. Um, This uses FFI uh, to get data from the mock about the current process. Um, and I'm going to link to those. And yes, Stack Overflow is already linked from here, but I don't know. In my opinion, it's more links is never a bad thing. Um, okay, so that's kind of like when I'm making commit messages, I say the current state of the world and then like the new state of the world. Um, and so even if I later go up, so the, the new state of the world is kind of my implementation of this. Uh, it's sort of like, what is the context? And then what is the opportunity? And then the bottom is like, what is my implementation? Um, and in this scenario, I've chosen to not fix this. Like I've chosen to not make a new FFI. I don't know how. Um, I mean, I can look into it. So what I'm going to probably do uh, is, you know, comment to Frederick, let him know, um, link to the issue. I've already asked here on Stack Overflow. Um, so I'm going to keep investigating, but at least it's better to have something that works uh, for now that is good enough, you know, good, better, best. I think this is good. It's it's not the best solution, um, but this this issue, <laughs> if we look at it, is what? Open since April, um, which is, you know, it's, I guess, actually not as bad as I thought, but it's not ideal. Um, so it would be better to, to release and cut a fix for this. Um, But in the meantime, if I do find a way to do it, then I might want to come back to my commit message and, and change it. So I'm just going to go ahead and write instead of talking because talking is boring. Okay. Uh, this. Uh, PR.
Um, yeah, I will comment. I will provide the benchmark because I think it, I think it's pretty useful. I think it, it gives some context. Um, Uh, and let's see. <laughs> I bet. Did I clear my screen? I did. Um, and I closed my benchmark. Uh. Uh. Come on. Uh. I don't want this. Those are not what I wanted. <sighs> okay. Uh, I'll just say the benchmark results. Uh, let's just say that it's approximately the speed of allocating three string objects, which it's actually faster than that. It's it's two dot six x. Um, let me see. Uh, we are also adding a test. Uh, for uh, to ensure that. Uh, Okay, uh, so that looks decent enough to me. I'm going to push this up. Make a PR. How long did this take? Okay, so this took about an hour. And this is, I, I think this is actually a pretty hard problem. Um, and we got it fixed in about an hour. Granted, I did have all this context coming in here, but I think... Um, it would have been possible to, like, again, and we did this in, like, 30 minutes. We got the test in, like, 30 minutes. Uh, so hopefully you learned a little bit. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to link to all those places. Uh, I'm going to make tests. Sure, test pass. Uh, th I mean, that's all, That's all like, housekeeping stuff. It's super important. Um, it just, I already told you that I'm going to do it, so you don't necessarily need to sit here and, and, and watch. Um but yeah, thanks for thanks for following along. Hopefully you learned something about either triaging some issues or maybe some process management stuff. Um, or I don't know. Uh, hopefully you learned something. Anyway, thank you for following along and I'll see you all around.